Let's go to our happy story. Yes, the happy story, please. Please. Yes, uh, this one actually comes from the uh, Denver Post. Denver, always a hotbed of uh, enlightenment thought. <laughs> um, gave us things like focus on the family mm. and uh, what was that? What was that? That dude, like the, the guy who was uh, caught in the gay affair. Oh God! Oh, he um, kind of looks like I he's can on. See his face. Yeah, he, he looks like he was on Joker Venom. Yeah, <laughs> I can see him like delivering his speech and everything. Oh my gosh! Well, there have been so many. Yeah, who that have, guy. This Anyways, happened to. There was a guy But now he went through some sort of. Uh, some sort of thing. I think this is the same sort of process where yeah, Spock yeah. used to a chain pure logic or whatever. Um, <laughs> and they gave him some sort of medallion and say, now you are 100% heterosexual. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, this comes from Denver. Denver set for UFO vote. Oh. Um, the campaign poster shows a flying disc over the painted skyline of Denver with the printed words, are you ready for the truth? Ooh. Uh, Jack Pegman uh, <laughs> plans to use this poster to get the word out for Initiative 300, his ballot measure that will go before Denver voters in November. The initiative would require the city to create the world's first government-sanctioned extraterrestrial affairs commission. Yes! Torchwood, Denver! <laughs> it's That's the what, X-Files! Seriously, that, <laughs> <laughs> that they would be government... It's, I find it funny that the very people who cover it up are now interested in <laughs> investigating it. You're getting close to something dangerous here, Mulder. Um, uh, Peckman contends that the U.S. government for years has suppressed information about aliens from outer space visiting Earth. So why would you not expect them to work well with this agency? Um, Everyone should ask elected officials why they won't release this information, Peckman said. I just know there's a cover-up. They're out to kill you, Governor. Um, and we should dig this. They're going to kill me? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Uh, and we should dig this up and find out how we could uh, benefit from this information the government has been withholding from us, the people. Uh, Brian Bonner, that's the guy behind this, uh, 43, said he and four others have formed a group. Uh, that's not the guy behind this, guy against it. As fight uh, the ballot initiative. He fears the commission will cost the city money, uh, despite Peckman's pledge that no tax money will be uh, tapped. He... Uh, I basically added that if voters approve this initiative, that Denver will be subjected to ridicule. Yeah, well, guess what, Denver? You're already being ridiculed. Yeah. Right here. If you shoot it down, though, you will win some brownie points. Oh, seriously. I will personally fly to Denver and hug every person in the city. Every person, and except for that guy. There you comes know who the I'm impetus talking about. Right there. That comes the impetus for the creepy emails. <laughs> uh, they're going to start giving money to the opposition campaign now. Oh, um, God. Uh, Peckman also said that he has set up a website touting his push where he claims Muhammad Ali saw at least 22 UFOs and was fascinated by them. <laughs> I, I, I love Muhammad Ali to death. He's a terrific athlete. However, this is a man who has been repeatedly punched in the head by people who punch people in the head professionally. <laughs> um, and they also mentioned Elvis uh, had more UFO sightings and meetings than any other celebrity. Elvis, I swear to God, that guy took more drugs than L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> Wow, Muhammad Ali and Elvis, I'm sold. Yes, right there. I know which way I'd vote yes, if it, I lived in Denver. If the initiative passes, the mayor would have to appoint a seven members to this commission. The ballot language adds that the commission members who are, quote, not Denver residents may participate from anywhere in the universe by any means available. Are you serious? Okay, we're getting on this. <laughs> okay. The duties of this commission would include evaluating the risks and benefits. <laughs> it's a cookbook! Um, for encounters with uh, extraterrestrials, the city would also publish on the city's website evidence and testimony regarding aliens uh, on Earth. And so now we're going to oh, have a dot .gov address where people are basically a crazy website. Oh, oh. no. This is a terrible idea. They're Denver... Don't do it. They're cutting funding. They, they want to cut funding for SCAN, but this is what they're going to pay for. It's like this is what city governments Wait are talking minute. about. Maybe we need to get the aliens on our side. Yes, yeah, seriously. Hmm. I, I'm thinking that you need to wear the special sunglasses to see them, though. <laughs> okay, on that note, let's move on. That was, wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's nice to know that there are still... Well, well, listen, everyone, voting is important. Get out and vote, yeah, okay? Seriously. November's just around the corner. Sadly, we won't have anything like that here in Seattle. Well, I'm sure Tim Iman's got something up his sleeve. Oh, oh If you're a Seattle resident, that joke I just made was very funny. Okay. okay. So get on to the topic? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's make okay. it happen. Okay.
today we are here to talk about militant atheism. And as you might have heard that, uh, we're going to talk, clearly we don't think most atheists are militant. Uh, this topic in a lot of ways is a successor that, to an earlier episode we did called Spiritual is a Nonsense Word, where we talked about how uh, words are applied and how we define them and how we apply them unfairly. Um, basically, I, I made the contention that the uh, word spiritual is a useless word that has no, um, no basic consensus on what actually people mean by it. Um, let's talk about another word, which is militant. Atheists are often accused uh, by um, believers of all stripes of being militant. This is especially true for prominent atheists like Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens, um, who, as far as I can tell, do not have Branch Davidian levels of uh, guns or people or aviators in Guyana or any of that stuff. As far as I know, yeah. Yeah. So basically, well, a lot of times what you see is you see prominent atheists equated with religious extremists. Right. I think this is nonsense. I want to explain not only why this is inaccurate, but also why. Uh, People who use this label on atheist don't typically apply the same standards for militancy that they would apply to a religious believer, for instance, Christians or Muslims. Uh, that the standards that they have, there's a much lower bar for an atheist to be considered militant, say Richard Dawkins versus, say, Osama bin Laden or the Hutari or something like right. that. So the real question is, why do people get this wrong? What, what is it that they're, they're missing about this? I think part of it is that atheists, the, the part to blame that we have in this is that we've been so quiet for so long, that we're only now sort of finding our voice in the media, we're only now sort of speaking out, and people aren't used to hearing it. So it's, a, to quote, you know, Alan Moore in V for Vendetta, that the, the sound of a voice uh, is only amplified by the silence that precedes it. And atheists have been quiet for a long time, not only from, you know, threat of, you know, threat of death, and execution during the Middle Ages, but there's been a real, a real push where we've been largely defined by our critics for decades, if not centuries, and we're only starting to speak out now, so people aren't used to hearing it, so they tend to think that we're militant compared to the people that they'd like to hear, which is us just staring at our shoes when somebody mumbles on about their personal fairy tales. Right, and, and a lot of it is certainly, at, at least in part, the novelty of the fact that here we are, people standing up in societies all over the world and saying, yeah, I don't believe in God. And this, it's a novel thing. It's something that is, as you said, relatively new. So it, it's, it comes as a bit of a shock to certain segments of society. And so they're going to apply shocking labels or labels that express their own um, shock for total lack of a different word, apparently. Um, they're going to apply labels like militant to us, even, even though, as we're going to explore, the word doesn't necessarily fit. Yeah, and I think, what is it that they're calling militant? We're talking about somebody like Richard Dawkins giving lectures and writing books that are controversial. Or even as far as the atheist visibility thing, we're putting ads on, bumper, on, uh, on buses, right. putting ads on billboards. Uh, largely the message behind those ads is if we exist and we are just as capable of morality as you are, and if you feel the same way as us, here is how you can contact us. We're right. sort of putting ourselves out there. Uh, let's let's actually talk about the word militant. Um, but I guess oh, there's another reason why they do this, which is I think that there's something I've learned to call the fallacy of the silent majority, which is I think that a lot of people have this tendency to simply assume that everyone who's not saying anything just secretly agrees with them. <laughs> yeah. And religious believers do this all the time, where they just make excuses by talking about how, oh, that's just an angry minority of uh, fundamentalists, but everyone else is secretly just like me and thinks that Jesus was a, was a hippie, vegetarian, pacifist, you know, whatever. <laughs> Uh, that everyone else is like that and that the Bible is actually the opposite of what it means. It's just an angry, you no, know, it's like, no, this is like 41% of people according to a lot of polls. And that 41% is all people. That includes Libby and myself and the rest of the hosts of the show and all the atheists. So we're helping skew that in your favor. And when I say 41% of people in America think that Jesus is coming back within the next 50 years, wow. that's, um, that's everybody. That's Fundamentalist Christians on one side at 41%, and that's everybody else on the other, including non-Christians, and even fundamentalist Muslims, fundamentalist everything else who don't believe Jesus is coming back, period, right. but still believe in apocalyptic crap. That's an, when, when you take into account that that 41% we're talking about, everybody, that is a massive number of people who really believe that Jesus is due any second now. And when you cut like the 5 to 10%, like atheists, right. and all these, probably another 5 to 10% of all these other religions, um, that does not look like a majority for you guys. It really doesn't. Yeah. So uh, let's let's actually talk about. Um, but anyways, that whole thing of accusing us. Oh, you're just like the Taliban. You're just like Pat Robertson. Uh, that's something that we get a lot. Um, that usually comes from religious moderates who throw things out like that. Um, and what I want to talk about is how we're not 
like Pat Robertson or the Taliban, but also how a lot of people say that it's also that sort of fallacy of the false middle, that they try to create right. themselves as the moderate and anybody else on either side of them is sort of defined into insanity. Right. So we're gonna we're gonna talk a bit about that. Let's let's talk about militant. Let's just get this word out of the out of the way right here. What is militant? What does it mean and what doesn't it mean? Um, I'm gonna say that, that doesn't mean just being opinionated or vocal. That I wouldn't say, for instance, that any politician or anyone with an opinion on anything, anybody like somebody up in the stands at the at the Seahawks Stadium, I refuse to call it Quest Field, um, <laughs> Seahawks Stadium, who's cheering on uh, the team, saying, "Oh, they're the greatest team ever." That guy is not militant. He feels right. really, really strongly about it. He's painted his face. He has a tailgate party. Uh, somebody who's like the head of um, Mothers Against Drunk Drivers, even if they give a really impassioned speech, that person is not militant. It doesn't mean just vocal. It doesn't because then everybody is militant. Right. Everybody is militant about, about something. something. Yeah. So let's let's get down. What is the what is the core of this word? You know, military militant. We're talking about people specifically who use the threat of force, force or outright violence. Um, that is militant. Let's give some examples of the Taliban. The Taliban are people who uh, basically want to force people to live in the dark ages. They don't allow women to get an education. If somebody does decide to get an education or shows skin, they'll throw battery acid in a woman's face. Mm -hmm. They blew up uh, ancient uh, Buddhist statues that were over a thousand years old because they were front to their, I mean, you know, say what you will, I don't think any of the mystical stuff of Buddhism is true, but anything that survives to a hundred, I mean, a thousand years, yeah. that is culturally and historically priceless. That is a crime. It, yes, it, it's unbelievable. I, I was so disgusted when I heard the news about those statues. It was just shocking that anybody could ever consider destroying ancient artifacts just because they didn't like them. Seriously, you know? if there was a, a thousand year old copy of the Quran, I would say protect that yes, thing because absolutely. it is historically valuable. Yes. You have to protect. The same thing with the Bible or anything else like that. Anything that survived that long, that is an artifact. Yes. Um, let's also talk about uh, Al-Qaeda. I mean, 9-11 being the big one, but the fact that these people um, in, in Iraq, at least, Al-Qaeda in Iraq, actively threatening people from voting, saying, we will right. kill you if you try to participate in this election. That's an example of militancy. They, they straight out want a theocratic state. They want to implement Sharia law like the Taliban. That's why they were allies over everyone, that if you're not as part of this group, you're either going to die or submit. Those are your two options. That is militant. Uh, we have insurgent beheadings. I forget the name of the, the dude. He was from Connecticut. He was a contractor over there. Was it Pearl? Was the last name Pearl? Or am I thinking of the reporter? I think you're thinking of the, perter, the reporter. Okay. Well, he was um, beheaded, beheaded also. Daniel Pearl, that's right. Daniel Pearl? Yes, he was uh, yeah. beheaded in front of a camera. They screamed, Allah Akbar, and chopped his head off in front of a green flag with the crescent on it. Uh, this nice. is insanity. They, and it's the same thing with a lot of people do get captured. They get captured by people who demand that they um, recite the thing and convert to Islam before they kill them. Or they will kill them. I mean, it's, it's insanity. Um, that, that. Or Muslim, uh, not just pick, we're going to get to Christianity in a second. Don't think we're just picking on We're not on. just picking on Islam. Though Islam has a lot to pick on. There's, there's a lot there, though. I um, mean. Muslim honor killings, where a woman is dis dishonors her family by being raped. Oh, God. Or, um, I mean, it's insane. Then you have the same sort of thing where the government of Saudi Arabia had a woman beaten yeah. uh, <laughs> for witchcraft, it was a, or uh, executed for witchcraft. Yeah. Uh, there was one woman who was executed because, well, she signed a confession. She was illiterate. She wasn't allowed to read. She had signed her <laughs> confession with a thumbprint that she had cast a spell to make this dude impotent. Oh, my God. I mean, this is insanity. That, so, yeah. Uh, we also have things like the people who murdered Theo Van Gogh. Yes. And uh, this is a filmmaker who had made a movie talking about the treatment of women under Islam. Yeah. Uh, he, and you want to talk about hardcore. This is how this guy was murdered. It wasn't just like shot in the head like in a video game or something like that. This guy was shot in the back like six to eight times, stabbed through the heart with a note, and beheaded in the middle of a city street in broad daylight. Yeah, he was, he was riding his bicycle down the street. And somebody like jumped out from a behind a car and was waiting for him, waiting for him to pass by, shot him several times, stabbed a note through his heart, with, which was basically a threat to the other people who had helped work on this film with him. And then they cut his head off right there in front of everybody. And he got away, apparently, right? Did they ever yeah. catch the guy? I don't know if they caught the guy. I, I have to 